Chapter 38. How we may draw not only celestial, and vital, but also certain intellectual, and divine gifts from above. Magicians teach that celestial gifts may through inferiors being conformable to superiors be drawn down by opportune influences of the heaven, and so also by these celestial, gifts, the celestial angels, as they are servants of the stars, may be procured, and conveyed to us. I am Bliches, Proclus, and Cinzius, with the whole school of Platonists confirm, that not only celestial, and vital, but also certain intellectual, angelic all, and divine gifts may be received from above by some certain matters, having a natural power of divinity, that is, which have a natural correspondency with the superiors, being rightly received, and opportunely gathered together according to the rules of natural philosophy, and astronomy, and Mercurius Trismegistus writes, that an image rightly made of certain proper things, appropriated to any one certain angel, will presently be animated by that angel. Of the same also Austin, St. Augustine, makes mention in his eighth book De Civitate de the City of God. For this is the harmony of the world, that things supercelestial be drawn down by the celestial, and the supernatural, supernatural, by natural. Because there is one operative virtue that is diffused through all kinds of things, by which virtue indeed as manifest things are produced out of occult causes, so a magician doth make use of things manifest, to draw forth things that are occult, viz. Through the rays of the stars, through fumes, lights, sounds, and natural things, which are agreeable to celestial, in which, besides corporeal qualities, there is a kind of reason, sense, and harmony, and incorporeal, and divine measures, and orders. So we read that the ancients were wont often to receive some divine, and wonderful thing by certain natural things, so the stone that is bred in the apple of the eye of a civet cat, held under the tongue of a man, is said to make him to divine, or prophecy, prophesy, the same is selenite. The moonstone, moonstone, reported to do, so they say that the images of gods may be called up by the stone called Anchites, and that the ghosts of the dead may be being called up, kept up by the stone Sinachitis. The like doth the herb, herb, Aglophotis too, which is called Marmorites, growing upon the marbles of Arabia, as saith Pliny, and the which magicians use. Also there is an herb, herb, called Riangelida, which magicians drinking of, can prophesy, prophesy. Moreover there are some herbs, herbs, by which the dead are raised to life, whence Xanthus the historian tells, that with a certain herb, herb, called Ballus, a young dragon being killed, was made alive again, also that by the same a certain man of Tilim, whom a dragon killed, was restored to life, and Juba reports, that in Arabia a certain man was by a certain herb, herb, restored to life. But whether or no any such things can be done indeed upon man by the virtue of herbs, herbs, or any other natural thing, we shall discourse in the following chapter. Now it is certain, and manifest that such things can be done upon other animals. So if flies, that are drowned, be put into warm ashes, they revive. And bees being drowned, do in like manner recover life in the juice of the herb nip, herb catnip, and eels being dead for want of water, if with their whole bodies they be put under mud in vinegar, vinegar, and the blood of the vulture, vulture, being put to them will all of them in a few days recover life. They say that if the fish echinus be cut into pay ices, pieces, and cast into the sea, the parts will within a little time come together, and live. Also we know that the pelican, pelican, doth restore her young, young, to life, being killed, with her own blood, 